Welcome to the EMEA Recruitment Podcast, brought to you in partnership with Operation Smile. We're committed to raising vital funds and awareness for Operation Smile to continue delivering life-changing surgery to children with cleft lip and palate. If you'd like to find out more about our partnership, please visit our website. In this episode, we're joined by Sally Hyam, Director, Head of Talent Attraction at Lonza and Executive Menopause Coach. To celebrate World Menopause Day, we discuss how to start a conversation around menopause in the workplace. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the EMEA Recruitment Podcast in partnership with our good friends over at Operation Smile. Uh, So today, as Rose has mentioned, we've actually got a returning guest in Sally Hyam. So I hope you're all well, Sally. All well. Thank you very much, um, Paul, for having me back. Very excited about today's today's topic. Uh, excellent. Yeah, delighted to have you back on the show. And as uh, Rose has mentioned in the introduction, that we're specifically going to be talking about uh, menopause today. And and I think it's <laughs> obviously um, an unusual topic to be speaking about, <laughs> certainly for me on the podcast. And I think uh, and I think one of the one of the the things why I think a podcast was really the right thing to do on on this subject is because I think it it is quite a difficult t- topic to, to yeah. talk about. The majority yeah. of people, Agree. I think, men and women, uh, you know, don't generally talk openly about this. And I think it, it, equally, there's a lot of challenges for clearly for women on this, but I think for for managers, for partners, for businesses, and, and it's a topic that I think needs uh, exploring and 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 talking about more so that people yeah. can, can help and be aware of it really so it's great to have you on the show and talk through this really thank you and don't forget transgender as well so they have a, a double whammy yeah. it affects transgender so yes this very much there's, there's there's individuals it directly affects and then there's individuals it indirectly affects so yes it will <laughs> it will touch at some point pretty much every person or certainly every female um in the in the world and certainly indirectly you know their family and their colleagues so yes it's um it's a it's a taboo topic i suppose paul you might say but getting mm, no, a bit more it. momentum <laughs> no it's true i mean and, and it's as you say i mean it's one of the uh the, the fastest or is the fastest growing demographic uh, out there you know uh, and i think uh w- women in in the uh, who are going through this and, and as you say you know it's not just women that are going through this and i think uh the, the more that i've researched into it and the more we, we've we've talked about this in my network as well generally the more you you learn i mean i think um you know what what was interesting to me was that um, i always felt that it was a certain age of woman who went through this but the reality is that it's around one in 100 women that experience menopause before the age of, of 40 and uh, i know it's usual for the uh, between the age of 45 and 55 but uh, you know yeah. certainly you know that that demographic it, it is so wide that, that clearly you know most managers can be sitting there and, and and they have can have colleagues who are going through this right now but are unaware of it uh, and, and are not willing to talk openly about it so well, another reason why i think it's great to to be able to to talk through this with you in in the show today and, and maybe a a good starting point might be if you can tell us a bit about your your own situation with with, with menopause <laughs> so not not again not not, not yeah. an easy kind of conversation no. to start off with but uh, but it'd be good to, if you're um, happy to, to talk through that really not a problem and um firstly thank you as i say for for having me back and october is menopause month and i think the date that we're releasing this is actually so firstly i want to say happy world menopause day um to everybody and trust me i didn't even know this existed um it's until i embarked on um this part of my life my my next chapter as i call it um And similar to yourself there, Paul, you sound like you've been doing some research myself. I have. So I just wanted to perhaps share. Konenki is the Japanese word, actually, for menopause, and it means renewal of life and energy, which I actually think is quite a beautiful and perhaps empowering way of viewing the menopause. Because honestly, I think people probably think this is for really like old, (laughs) Mm, mm. Um, you know, and sort of graying individuals, perhaps. Um, But to actually answer your question, you know, my own situation of the menopause, I think like a lot of women, um, I'm piecing my symptoms together um, because, as I said, I didn't really know (laughs) about the menopause. I'd heard about it, but I didn't actually appreciate what it was or what it is as I'm still going through it. Um, My symptoms started around the age of 46. um, And like I mentioned at the time, I didn't think that was 
old <laughs> in mm. quotes if you like um and now um as a 51 year old i'm clearly still going through it and still adapting to what all of these symptoms are so for me at the time um i was actually living in singapore um and i actually had an annual medical and i was um sent for a bone density scan something i'd never actually heard of um and then it came back with a diagnosis of osteopenia um, and actually, when you go through the menopause, your levels of um, estrogen and other hormones, they drop sharply. So because of the estrogen, so because the estrogen actually helps maintain your bone density. So this drop can actually lead to significant bone loss over time and low bone density. So osteopenia means clearly that you have a lower than normal bone density. Um, and why I'm saying this is when it, when my results came back, the doctor and the gynae didn't mention anything to me about the menopause. They just told me that I was, or I had osteopenia. So I kind of went on my merry way and had loads of other symptoms, you know, mood swings, genuinely so, so up and down. It was like I was sort of sitting on a emotional roller coaster, I suppose, if you like. One minute I was literally crying. I had fatigue like I'd never had. Um, and my husband suffers with chronic fatigue. So I know what fatigue and seeing someone going through that and tiredness in my body. You know, sometimes I think people have gone through COVID, you know, that tiredness, that achiness mm. in your body. Um and I just, you know, and I had that for a good, good couple of years. So I didn't know what it was. You know, you sort of, and various females or so say transgender, you know, you go to the doctors and you can actually get misdiagnosed or you'll get diagnosed with something else. By this time, we'd moved to, to Basel. So I was working for a new company and I'm living in a different country. So obviously, changing my medical support you know you kind of think oh perhaps a big life life moment might be why I'm feeling like I am um, you know I had conversation with my mother you know what was it like for you um, she's very much into sort of like the non-medical treatment so she'd recommend things like evening primrose oil and black cohesh that would help with my mood swings which which did for a, you know did did help for a bit um and like i said you know you then got to move into a new country you're finding different medical support and actually the gynecologists over here tend to actually put you on non-medical treatment to start with just to sort of see how your body reacts to it um now i'm actually on hormone replacement therapy like I, like i talked about you know i think that's that that is that is it it is a drop um and it's about replacing it um but again for me Paul, that's been a journey. You know, the dosage of that has increased. Um, it doesn't eliminate all of my symptoms, but it certainly helps me. So um, <laughs> hopefully a shortened version of everything that I physically go through. I think, you know, I, I don't get the hot sweats. I don't get the, the night sweats, the hot flushes that I think typically are associated with the menopause, if you like. Um, so for me, it was, and like a lot of females, you piece it together yourself. I mean, thanks for you know opening up on on that on that subject because I mean I know it's you know it's 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 not an easy thing to talk about mm. but I mean is it's I mean how do you find it now to talk about this because I guess this isn't the first time you've spoken openly about this but, it is, <laughs> but it's but it's not the but it's not a subject I, I would imagine that a lot of women and transgender w wouldn't want to talk about and find it difficult so what do you feel is was the spark to make you want to talk openly about this um, this situation. I suppose for me, it was something that I, <laughs> I was trying to understand what was happening to myself. You know, why, why was this happening to me? Um, I will say certainly in the workplace, you know, it's, you know, trying to have a, a conversation, I suppose, perhaps advice um, to give, um, you know, others to bring it up with their managers. You know, how could I advise people? Because this is, it, it can be tough talking about it. You know, you, could, you might talk about it to your friends, but perhaps bringing it into the workplace can be quite can be quite hard, Paul. I suppose. So for me, honestly, I've been actually incredibly lucky with with my manager. Certainly here for me in um, in Basel in Switzerland, my managers have changed over the the, the time. Um, but both and both are actually male, um, a bit younger than myself. So I suppose I made an assumption that perhaps their wives haven't gone through it yet. Um, and I think the thing for me is they've listened. Um, it might have been hard perhaps for them to 
I wouldn't necessarily say listen, but you know, it's not something they can fix. But I think for me, it's something, and I, I personally really appreciate it, that they, they were just listening. That really actually helped me feel less embarrassed, you know, because it is embarrassing to start having that conversation, you know, with with anybody. Um, and I would like to just perhaps point out that it's actually not an illness. You know, this is a natural life event um, and will, like I mentioned at the beginning, it will impact every female, you know, at some point in their life, you know. So to me, sort of advice on how to share within a workplace, you know, don't be afraid to have that conversation. You know, for me, being able to talk about it, it's the first step. You know, it's all we can do to sort of try and break the taboo. Like you said, it is an interesting topic and we want to try and change that narrative ultimately in any workplace. Um, I think we do need to appreciate a culture layer with this as well, because like we said, it is a sensitive topic, you know, a bit like perhaps talking about periods, you know, in some cultures you you, you don't. So um, my advice is try not to be embarrassed, um, you know, and just try and talk about it. Um, and, you know, I think once you once you do um, embark on that journey, you will probably realise that there are others feeling the same. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. I mean, I was going to ask, because I know you mentioned, obviously, um, that the managers you were talking to listens well and, and gave yeah. you the opportunity to talk. But, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, if I'm putting myself in, in, in the position of other other women going into these meetings you know how, how did you plan for that meeting because i mean i guess you know you've got <laughs> to you've got to you've got to make sure you 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 you've structured this in the right way and and and, and get the point across you know and, and obviously it's tough because you know as you as you mentioned before menopause affects everybody in di- in different ways but if you're if you are uh, you know, in a situation where you're having you know, em- emotional stress, you're feeling run down, you, you know, you, you're maybe lacking confidence because I know what, one of the symptoms can be weight gain, weight mm-hmm. loss or losing hair mm-hmm. and, and so on. Um, so you're not in the best place mentally anyway. So then to sit down and think, right, I'm going to go in and have a chat with my manager about this. You know, I think if you if you don't plan for the meeting, that, that meeting could be, might not go exactly the way you want it to go. So, I mean, how, how did you plan for the meeting with the managers because i think that could be something interesting for people to hear about because you know to know the the frame of mind that they went into the meeting with and what they what they plan to how they plan to present what they were going through yes it's it's an interesting one i think for me so i suppose is it i suppose is it more advice do we give managers you know on the best approach to to support their team members you know i think it's you know it's an interesting conversation I think to have I think for a from a manager point of view you know how do how do managers deal with individuals but also how do individuals know I mean like you said I just sort of perhaps reframe this you know you mentioned about menopausal women being you know one of the fastest demographics you know yes I think you know yes it is one of the fastest demographics in the the workplace and I just want to perhaps just add a bit of colour and context to that you know I think if we think you know we know we're living in an aging population but if we take a, a step back you know in the Victorian times you know women died sadly at the age of 59 and like you've identified there Paul you know one in four in the UK females will have a 100 year lifespan you know so half of their time is going to be hormone deficient um, you know and currently the average age is about 51 they're saying for for, for the menopause um, so obviously if we think back <laughs> to the Victorian times it didn't necessarily impact the workplace then but clearly it is now um, you know, and I'm reading various stats on this. By 2030, over one billion women will be menopausal or postmenopausal, which is a huge number, a for females, but also for their managers to go through it. So I think for me, whether you're a manager or whether you're a you know a team member that is is in this, I think it's about how can we support managers, but also the menopausal, I suppose, team members. Because like I said, you know, for me, I've pieced my journey together. Um, I'm quite a very open honest if someone asks me how I'm feeling and that to be honest is how my conversation was with my team I said it in like a one of my leadership calls someone asked me how I was feeling and I said not very well 
I'm I'm X, Y, Z and Z and because of. But I think, you know, some females, as I say, they don't know that it's actually happening to them. You know, they haven't they haven't embarked on that that journey. So they haven't put themselves, if you like, in that perimenopause, menopause box. So therefore, from a manager point of view, you know, how can we support the managers to help their team members? So it's in some ways it's a bit of a bit of a vicious cycle I suppose if you like you know and for me I would say where do you what do we share with who and how you know and workplaces organizations employers they can support managers which ultimately supports the employees in a variety of ways you know and I think for me some of it is perhaps having lunch and learn sessions you know what are the symptoms what are the medical and non-medical options? You know, sharing resources. Like I know, you know, you've gone on the journey and you've got the, the, the Davina book, you know, and you've you've read that, you know. And, you know, do you know what I mean? You know, it's kind of like sharing these sorts of um, things within and, you know, you might get those light bulb moments for those individuals. Um, I took a course, you know, I'm technically a executive menopause coach now. I, I took mine at the Catherine Colas Academy, you know, and actually they have this great menopause traffic light, which actually is sort of a very structured way of the different age groups and what I suppose if you like and you can work any organization can then work with say comms or HR or their wellbeing teams to overlay, you know, communications plan that would go out to individuals you know understand your your workforce your demographic your makeup you know perhaps bring in external speakers you know to help support the managers but also that entire workforce um you know some organizations out there um will have perhaps occupational health you know in hr or well-being i know a lot have mental health support um you know they might have employee assistance programs you know so there's all sorts of different ways that an individual but i think for me for me i personally was just very open about it but as i say i think the key any organization is perhaps sharing some of the awareness of what it is and then a female or a transgender might identify themselves and say that's me I need to perhaps seek some medical advice and then understand and then have that conversation so hopefully that <laughs> kind of mm. helps <laughs> both I suppose, from a manager and from an employee point of view because it is mm. tough hi everybody it's Paul Thomas here I hope that you're well and you're enjoying the podcast so far Thank you once again for your continued support listening to the podcast. I just wanted to break into the recording to talk to you about a really exciting partnership that EMEA Recruitment has along with Operation Smile. And as founder of EMEA Recruitment, it's an honor and a privilege to announce this partnership. Personally, I was born with a cleft lip and palate. So the mission of Operation Smile is something that I have a strong personal connection with. It's not an understatement to say that the dentists and surgeons that helped me were life changers. It's not only about the actual operations that take place, the support and care post and pre-operation are beyond value. And from personal experience, I can only say that I'd not be the confident, happy person I am today without this support. I want to help children experience the support and care and skill that I experienced on my journey and hope that we can do this along with Operation Smile. Every three minutes, a child is born with a cleft lip or cleft palate, and the mission of Operation Smile is to provide help and support to these children through providing 6,000 medical volunteers across 80 countries who are dedicated to help these children with facial conditions, most commonly cleft lip and cleft palate. More than 200,000 children are born with a cleft every year, and they are often unable to speak, eat, socialize, or even smile. However, it can take as little as 45 minutes and cost just 180 euro or 182 francs for Operation Smile to provide a child with life-changing surgery. Now in partnership with Operation Smile, EMEA Recruitment is raising valuable funds and aiming to create 100 new smiles to support the organization to provide free surgeries for children and young adults all over the world. Please help us by donating through the link in the bio or get in touch to see how your company can help get involved too. 
For the moment, I'll leave you to carry on listening to the rest of the podcast. But if there's anything I can do in terms of answering any questions or finding out how you can help and support EMEA Recruitment and Operation Smile, then please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you once again and enjoy the rest of the podcast. I think you know that the, the, that definitely helps, and also I'm, I'm thinking about something you mentioned earlier with the meeting with your managers. The key thing was that they they listened, and, and I guess yeah. uh, you know as as the knowledge of menopause and and we start talking about it more is is growing. You know, I think uh, you know in the in the short term, would you say that's the best thing that a manager can can really do? You know, so if you are if anyone's listening to this and is a manager and gets approached by a member of their team talking about what the challenges that you're going through in menopause the best thing to do is is to is to listen is that is that be the best bit of advice you give whilst we're going through this kind of stage of, of, of building the awareness of it yeah i think you know advice for for any employers you know yes this sort of you, know, you can go all singing or dancing create a full-on um you know menopausal policy but so for me i think any employer listening that is on this journey as 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 we are um you know yes there are many many ways that any employer can start so for me i suppose if there's i suppose buckets of activity so like i mentioned awareness um you know perhaps through the eap providers or you know through someone like the catherine colas academy or other organizations henpecked you know um create that awareness lunch and learns menopause cafes you know it's about i suppose if you like in a very upfront way it's confronting age bias you know acknowledge that there's a the knowledge gap and create that psychological safe environment to be able to talk about it you know so that sort of awareness piece i think is one then it's that education you know talk to employers and leaders like I mentioned at varying levels um, you know then you can do perhaps some some training or as I say you know bring in um, create an employee resource group bring in menopause um, experts you know that can advise organizations and managers you know this this I suppose is similar to perhaps a neurodiversity topic Paul you know it's like what are the workplace adjustments you know you can go all singing all dancing with all sorts of policies adjustments um, you know that, 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 that can be brought into place but I think for me if an organization is creating awareness within an organization that creates a safe space for individuals to want to talk about it the manager won't have all of the answers you know and I think this is the, the point and even myself as class myself as you know a menopause coach you have to seek medical advice, you know, and I think I would like to to say, you know, like 47 million new women are entering the menopause each year, you know, and like I said, we're living longer. The news, clearly, as we've said, it is picking up momentum. You know, I think back in 2021, I think the UK, you know, there's now a, a workforce around this within the government, you know, they're looking to sort of bring in how do workforces, work, work organisations support menopause in the in the workplace so there are hopefully that kind of gives a bit of a a bit of a flavor you know i think it's that awareness and then perhaps that education and that support Oh, it's really interesting. I mean, and you mentioned earlier, you know, the Davina McCall book, uh, Menopausing, and, and uh, yeah. I'd, I'd watched her on a, a Stephen Bartlett podcast, and then she was talking about the book, and and then decided to, I decided to, to read the book, and and, and I, you yeah. know, I think it was just, I mean, I think um, certainly if I can, uh, if I just speak from a personal point of view, I know that. Um, uh, that that gave me a lot of um, respect for my wife, definitely, because my wife is going through <laughs> menopause at the moment, and I think it's, it was one of those ah. things that actually just knowing a bit about what um, what what it really is, you know. I mean, I think um, and and not 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 judging uh, trying your, or trying your best at least not to judge situations that the 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 and 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 things that are said and done because you you now know actually all the things that are are going on in uh, when 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 people are going through menopause i mean i i had no idea you know until i kind of read this book uh, actually the the extremities and 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 just the variety of of Totally. Uh, of situations i mean it's uh yeah i i really um it was really eye-opening on, on that side you know and i think um you know yeah it's it's a fairly you know that's a short investment of time to read the book on it but it, but actually what you gain from it 
uh, when the subject does come up now, at least um, you feel more comfortable talking about it because you understand a bit about it. And I think that's yeah. a, a big part of it. Yeah, no, and I think, you know, and it can impact a female's career, you know, and I think it's probably worth, like you, you mentioned about so, so the age demographic bit there, you know, and I think menopause, I think menopause, it's an interesting one because there's so many people, I think, label it as menopause. So menopause itself, if you like, is a re- retrospective diagnosis, you know, that you haven't had a period for longer than a year. Um, you know, so the perimenopause is the, the phase before, you know, and that can that can be anything from four to 12 years. So, you know, as a female in a career, um, in work, you know, that's quite a long time that that can perhaps impact work and home life. Um, you know, and actually, and that was the thing about this traffic light system, you know, menopause before the age of 40, you know, that can affect, like, I think it's one in a, one in 100, and that's known as premature ovarian, you know, insufficiency, POI. So there's quite, <laughs> again, it, 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 it goes on for quite some, some time. And I think the thing to note, you know, it, it sort of collides at a female's point when perhaps they've reached a certain point in their level of their career. They have aging parents at home. They potentially got teenagers. I have, you know, my son is 14, you know, and sometimes you do question yourself. Some choose not to go for that promotion because they then start questioning their current capability. And I can't go for that. Their confidence, like you've said, is knocked, Um, you know, so it can really impact a female's um, career Um, and I think just to sort of share with you I think the Guardian did a survey back in 2022 Paul and you know 2,000 women they surveyed and 62% said that menopause impacts their work 33% said they don't talk about their symptoms and 43% were too embarrassed to ask for support so you know my advice (laughs) you know like I mentioned you know seek medical support you know because again everyone's going to be different you know and I think there is an element um our lifestyle changes you know so you know you're looking at your health your diet your lifestyle etc so you might be able to get that confidence back so don't make any rash decisions you know don't start handing a notice in if you're feeling (laughs) low in confidence or that kind of thing you know so it's sort of look at look at everything but yeah the, the the menopause can can impact a, a female's career, which is quite sad in that sort of sense with the numbers of females that are in the workforce and the ageing population that we're going into. No, it's, it's true. I mean, yeah, you mentioned it yourself as well, you know, that, um, yeah, decisions made um when when women are going through this, uh, you know mm. they can really re- regret them a few years later. Definitely. And, and by that point, it, it, there's not much they can do at that that stage. Uh, but I think if uh, decisions are made when people around them don't know the origin of the decision, uh, then then uh, then I think that the decisions are taken on face value. But if people know, you know, that the, 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 the you're going through menopause and that you're finding it tough, uh, you know, then the decisions you make, you know, should be questioned a bit more you know to make sure it is the right thing and 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 uh and and, and help as much help given as as possible really i mean i think yeah. it's um i mean you mentioned i mean we've talked a few times about you know people talking openly about this uh, i know we we had a conversation a few weeks ago and uh i was i was telling you my my mother and my mother-in-law were, couldn't believe <laughs> that, that I, we were going to have this conversation <laughs> there was uh, yeah there was so much and like, you, you speak to a lady who's going to come on and, and talk about the challenges of menopause are they saying obviously that they're, they're in their 70s now and they were saying in their generation it was something they was never spoken about and uh, you just had yeah. to kind of get on with it and and so no one uh, questions and, and you know their husbands you know you know would run a mile for having a conversation with them about uh, about this subject so uh, so it is a, it's a sign that things are moving in the right direction that just the very fact that uh we're able to have conversations like this and there's obviously other people you know uh, trying to raise awareness of it uh, as well and um and I, th- there was a question that, that i had to, and it's maybe um i guess it's uh, only one that that um someone like yourself who's going through this will be able to, to answer rather than, than me but i mean do, do you think is it is it easier to have a conversation ab- a- about menopause with a male or female manager you know i mean uh, obviously there's various uh, variations of that you know just because you're male or female manager doesn't make you a good or bad manager but but i mean it, let's say it, yeah it would would you find it it's it's an easier conversation to have with a, a female manager or, or don't you think it that that really matters 
it's an interesting question. I, 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 I suppose it depends. For me, I've, I, as I say, my, mine have changed over the time that I've, I've been here and have both been male. So it's a hard one for me to um, comment, I suppose, in that sense. Um, you know, I talk very openly about it within my team, you know, and I've got male and female within that team. Um, but I suppose, again, I suppose depending on the age and where that, if you have a female and a female, depending on where they are within their journey on it. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's an interesting one. I'd say for me, it was, it might not necessarily have been on a one-to-one. Obviously I have, but for me, I, I just spoke about it in the LT, as I say, in, our, in one of our leadership calls. You know, you sort of do a bit of a round table, how are you feeling? And I generally was just a bit like, I'm not feeling great at the moment. I'm feeling really, I don't want to put my camera on. And I'm sitting at home and I'm on a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Um, you know, and, and actually happy to sort of share with you, <laughs> Paul, when we talked about sort of my symptoms earlier, I think they're the sort of some of the things that I was, you know, finding my way around. But it has been challenging for me in work you know and I think it is about some women will absolutely sail through this you know what how I'm describing is not going to be what everybody goes through you know I think they say three out of four will experience some symptoms for four to ten years some just completely sail through it and about 25 percent have symptoms that are so severe um, you know, for me, like I mentioned, it was an, an emotional roller coaster, and it still is, you know, and I do, I personally have experienced and I've apologized to people. I remember Teresa, you know, I felt like I was quite snappy on a call, you know, and I've, I've, I've apologized. I get brain fog, you know, I, people that I've worked with for three years, I forget their name, you know, and I'm, I'm embarrassed, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm going, what's their name? What's their name? You know, and I, I get migraines. I've never had that. You know, and I think for me, that was, uh, you know, sometimes I get towards the end of the day and my head, honestly, I just want, it just wants to explode. I kind of get to a point where if anyone asks me another question or I have to look at a screen, I just, I, I can't, my brain cannot take in any more information. And it's, it, as someone that just gets on with stuff and I pride myself in being quite a tough individual, I've really, I have struggled with that and how to adapt in the workplace for me you know again open open sharing a couple of years ago i i had to call on one of my meetings i had to cancel it because I, I physically i couldn't do it i got in the car in the car park i sat and i cried <laughs> and i was just like what was going on i went home and i took two days and like i said it's not an illness but at the time i then put i noted my absence as menopause because i didn't know what else to call it um, like I said, it's not an illness. So how do, and that's another thing, how can organisations monitor this or mark this as absenteeism? Because they'll have females within their workplace that are taking days out and they don't know how to acknowledge it or note it, you know. So for me, it's it has been tough in the workplace, you know, but I've seeked the help. I look at my lifestyle, you know, sadly, I've had to cut out alcohol. You know, it doesn't, women of a certain age, we can't process it like we used to. I will say on a plus side, I get better sleep. Um, and again, that's something that really impacts some females. So again, if you've had a bad night's sleep and you're trying to <laughs> operate at your best, it's going to be a challenge. So it's, it's for me personally, it's been up and down but as I say some women super lucky they will completely mm -hmm. sail through it others will have worse symptoms than, than than myself and like we said I think most doctors kind of historically used to think oh it's irregular periods hot flashes and night sweats you're in the menopause but now there is so much more um, you know as I said this brain fog the migraines the itchy skin you know, there's all sorts of different symptoms. And that's where I think organisations, if you can host sessions to talk around all these symptoms, you'll get those light bulb moments for individuals that you'll just start opening up within outside and inside work for people to be able to openly um, and less embarrassed 
talk about these sorts of things. So I'm hoping that my sharing some <laughs> very personal stories will help some individuals out there. Well, I mean, I guess a question I had as well, you know, obviously, you, it's going back to the conversation you have with your your managers, but I'm trying to think mm. of a different scenario, you know, which, mm. again, other people might have already faced or, or, or yeah. might face coming up. I mean, if you'd have gone to your managers and they'd almost laugh the problem off, you know, like, I mean, I, 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 I'd imagine there's still managers out there who would yeah. take yeah. that approach they just say oh, yeah. it's nothing you know go home have you know do some meditation and, and come back tomorrow you know mm -hmm. i mean that, that that actually was some advice that one of my friends was given uh, i was talking to her the other day about this podcast and she said that was advice that she got was to go on the meditation course then come back the next week and uh, uh and you know so i know it does it, that that advice does exist from managers out there but i mean you Sadly, know, how, yes how, we and, know and, and, and she i can't tell you the exact phrase she said so in terms of reactions to that because uh yeah it'd have to be beeped out of the the podcast but, uh, but let's say the um yeah the, the i mean i don't know yeah i mean how would you deal with that if if it if the the, the situation was just really massively downgraded and, and it actually could then send you into a a, a a larger spiral of despair i think you know if you feel like you've had the courage to go in and have the conversation uh, and then it hasn't been taken seriously at all you know what what would you do then well, do you know what, actually, Paul, on that? I mean, I think some of that is that then isn't a psychological safety environment for those individuals, which I think, you know, yes, let's be honest. I think there's going to be places like that. We're not creating utopia. Um, but I think, like I said, there is more men more momentum with this now and actually recently on the BBC News, a woman um she's received 37,000 payout after boss dismissed menopause you know so there is momentum with this so i think if we can start creating some awareness with this this will start opening up individuals and workplaces but i have seen as i say you know there there are you know, suing individuals for unfair dismissal and harassment around this, you know. So I don't mean to be saying this in a, but organisations perhaps do need to sit up and 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 look at this and understand. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that individuals are going through that. I've been incredibly, as I said, lucky. Um, I don't know whether my managers necessarily knew how to respond to me, but I just, you know, I just talk about it. But sadly, yes, there will be individuals like that. And I think as well, Paul, I think the thing to note is when individuals go to seek medical help, quite often, and that's why I call myself, I suppose, if you like an international menopause, because I was in Singapore and now I'm in Switzerland, where you've got paying medical support you know from an nhs point of view and i'm certainly not starting the nhs the nhs i think is incredibly someone's born there you know i think i've got a lot of admiration for the nhs but a lot of the doctors are not trained in menopause so therefore they are misdiagnosing so the amount of females that i hear are going similar to that they go to a doctor they get sent away with antidepressants because they're told they're depressed no i'm not depressed i'm menopausal so therefore i need hormone replacement therapy not antidepressants so i think there's a we will start seeing i suppose if you like a bit of a societal shift uh, i think it's even actually being talked about now in education in schools in the uk they're starting to bring, you know, you might talk about periods. So this is almost, if you like, a bit of a reverse period, <laughs> a different age group. So, yes, I think if an individual has that from their manager, perhaps go to HR, go and find, try and find other individuals within that organisation that potentially they could have a more fruitful conversation with. But yes, I think, like you say, Paul, you've identified something and we know that these conversations will still be going on. As I say, you know, I mean, listening to your journey and what 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 mm -hmm. you're doing to raise awareness of it. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's a brilliant thing that you, you're doing. And I, and <laughs> I mentioned you. earlier, I know it's not it's not easy to come on 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 the show like this and and talk about something so personal. So I think uh, yeah, I know that the, the network will get a lot from this, and uh, we'll obviously make sure that um, you know when we <laughs> release the podcast, so there's, we put your link in there so people can reach out to you and yeah. uh, and ask for help and advice as well. And uh, yeah. I know that, that, 
I mean, the last question I had was really aligns what you hope to achieve with the work that you're doing on menopause, <laughs> both within work and outside. You know, what what is it that you're ultimately hoping to, you know, that maybe a medium song is yeah. goal hoping to achieve with it, really? I think for me, um, you know, we can all have our little catch lines with all of these sorts of things. But, you know, I think to and it was a post that I, funny enough, when I shared that story about, you know, cancelling a meeting and sitting in a car it took me a while and I kind of thought do I post something on LinkedIn and I actually shared that story on LinkedIn and I quoted this then it was about a year ago you know I want to be able to perhaps shake the shame you know and start a conversation either you know so for me yes I am raising awareness I'd like to try and help and support and change the narrative in the workplace that I'm uh, I'm in but also, you know, yes, to help to help others. Um, yeah, okay, perhaps I took it a little <laughs> too extreme by doing a executive menopause coaching course. Um, I've read books. I've got books coming literally, you know, from the perimenopause solution from Emma Bardwell, you know, to the Davina one, to Mariella Frostrop, to Lisa Snowden, you name it. You know, and I think that's the thing. There is a bit of momentum with this now um so for me you know and i'm happy actually paul to share any suggestions on books and resources if that would help when you release this not a problem um but for me doing this with you i think that is you know it's you've pushed me out of my comfort zone <laughs> to share something <laughs> that is is personal which is has been uh, and is a lovely lovely thing to do so firstly thank you for allowing us to host this um and as i say october i think you know it's 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 perfectly timed it is menopause month i will be hosting a menopause cafe within within work on menopause day i want to understand the appetite within our organization you know i want to understand the demographics that make up within my organization you know but plus yes how can i share so happy to have share my story you know (laughs) i think i'm coming to your well-being week you know to share happy to share my my story and i've got facts and figures and you know all sorts to to be able to i'm I'm speaking actually in barcelona in march at hr call lab you know on menopause in the workplace um so yes you know for me if i can help anybody that for me is um you know that, that that brings me joy um and uh, yeah i think I all this is, is <laughs> it is definitely all this is definitely helping you know at the end of the day you know i think the, the conversation I think the more the conversation is broached, yeah. it, you know, whether it's social media yeah. or events or, 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 you know, even around the, the coffee table at work, you know, then, you know, the, the more people start thinking about it and, and, and talking about it. You know, I mean, if you look at the, yeah. what what we're talking about now, you know, and, and, and having, yeah. you know, research into this, it means that, that that's impacted the way that definitely, you know, I'm going to deal with the situation, uh, you know, if it, if it comes up with any of the, the, the team at, at EMEA, but then obviously you know yeah. then it, then uh, you know if, if anyone else listens to the podcast it, it hears this and then it has an impact on them and the people that they're, they're with and, and manage and, and so on it's i think it's it's a bit of a, a spiral effect you know right. uh, and, and uh, you know, not too dissimilar to things like you know diversity and inclusion you know and i think yeah, you know you see definitely. you know 20 years ago um where diversity and inclusion was and where it is now yeah it's still not perfect but it's hell of a lot better than what it was 20 years ago in in the workplace and i think that this is it feels like the menopause subject is on you know very early stages but if uh, you know if in a few years time you know the the you know the work you're doing has impacted you know is going to impact a lot of people and then that goes into their their lives their businesses their you That's know their true. careers you know their partners yeah. lives you know it has a huge impact on so many people so yeah huge thanks for being on on the show today I've definitely you know learned a lot from it I, I'm going to say it's probably you know when I was before we came into the into the recording <laughs> it's probably the most nervous I've been going into the podcast because I think okay this is completely out of my comfort zone as well but i think at least i'm the one that's just got to ask the questions rather than answer them so uh, yeah i appreciate uh, i appreciate going through that uh, and also making it, it, it making me feel comfortable talking about it to, to you as well so i think uh, yeah i really appreciate your time and going through this and uh let's say when we pr- promote it uh, we'll make sure we uh we follow all the the these articles on the so it's spoken about yeah, as well and, and the book links to the books, share, so, yeah, yeah some books that i've been reading and various uh 
um, websites that I sort of, that, you know, have been looking at. But yeah, I think it's an interesting, I don't want to call it movement, but it's certainly an interesting topic. I mean, and listen, just I suppose before we're sort of closing out, you know, I think a lot of organisations, they want, you know, they want to sort of change their quotas by, you know, say 2030 to have gender parity, you know, etc. in female leadership, for instance, you know. So, you know, by sort of any organisation that's looking to support women through the perimenopause and the menopause, you know, to potentially not leave <laughs> their workforce, um, I think is, you know, for me to support them through that, I suppose, that transition of life. I think for me, organisations will hopefully see that as a good retention, um, you know, part to help them within their their workforce. So, yes, like you say, I think diversity, inclusion, neurodiversity, this, you know, it's all, all, all an interesting topic of conversation. So thank you so much for allowing me <laughs> to share. Uh, excellent. I really appreciate your time, Sally. As I say, really enjoyed the conversation. I know it will help a lot of people in the network Thank as you. well, which is is the main thing. So that's that's great. So, yeah, great to have your time. So, yeah, I hope it's hope it all goes well. And obviously, we look forward to uh, yeah seeing you uh, on the EMEA uh, Wellness uh, Week as well. So, uh, thanks. Thank for being you. Part Looking of that forward well. to so, it. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> all good. Thanks, Sally. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, Paul. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. If you'd like to reach out to Paul or myself, please feel free to send a connection through on LinkedIn. And if you'd like to listen to previous episodes of the podcast, you can find them all at our website, www.emearecruitment.eu.